Hello and welcome to a new chapter of mathematics on inverse trigonometric functions. Today we shall be beginning this lecture by the basic definition or meaning of an inverse trigonometric function. Later we are going to deal up with some properties and graph of inverse sine function and inverse cosine function. And finally we shall conclude this lecture based on inverse trigonometric function by discussing some numerical problems that would be based on finding the principal values of inverse sine function or inverse cosine function. Now starting with the basic definition of an inverse trigonometric function which can be defined as the inverse the corresponding trigonometric functions. For example sine inverse x is defined as the angle whose sine is x. Now let us consider a function which is y equal to sine inverse x then x is equal to sine y where y is independent and x is dependent variable. Now to each value of y there corresponds just one value of x in equation which is equal to x equal to sine y. On the other hand the same value of x corresponds to an unlimited number of values of the angle so that to any given value of x between minus 1 and 1 there corresponds an unlimited number of values of the angle y whose sine is x. Thus we have defined sine inverse x. Now first we are going to discuss an inverse sine function. For that let us consider a sine function f which is equal to sine x with domain equal to r and whose range is equal to minus 1 to 1. Now in order to draw the graph we have the table for f as shown. Now here for every value of x we have a particular value of y which is equal to fx which is equal to sine of y. Thus we can write y is equal to fx which is equal to sine of x. A portion for this graph is as shown. Now here we note that the horizontal line y equal to 1 by 2 meets the graph at many points. So f is not 1 to 1 but if we restrict our domain from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 both inclusive we observe that in this part the domain is 1 to 1. Therefore the function y is equal to fx is equal to sin x with domain minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and range equal to minus 1 to 1 has an inverse function called the inverse sine function and is denoted by sine inverse x. Thus y is equal to sine inverse x with condition that x is equal to sine of y and y belongs to interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Next we are going to discuss the properties of an inverse sine function. Now the first property is that the domain of sine inverse x is equal to minus 1 to 1 and its range is given as minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. The second property gives us the sine of sine inverse of x which is equal to x for x in the interval minus 1 to 1 that is mod of x is less than equal to 1. Next property gives us the value of sine inverse of sine of y which is equal to y for y belonging to interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 that is mod of y is less than equal to pi by 2 and the function that is sine inverse x with x lying between minus 1 to 1 and y having the values between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 is strictly increasing and is 1 to 1. To draw the graph of y which is equal to sine inverse of x we note that y increases monotically from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 as x increases from minus 1 to 1 and the value of of sine inverse of 0 is equal to 0 sine inverse of 1 is equal to pi by 2 and the value of sine inverse of minus 1 is equal to minus pi by 2 the next thing to be noted is that the function sine inverse x is defined in the interval minus 1 to 1 only. We thus have the graph as shown here. Now here we note that the value of sine inverse of 0 is 0. Similarly the value of sine inverse of 1 is equal to pi by 2 and the value of sine inverse of minus 1 is minus pi by 2. 
and the graph is defined in the interval minus 1 to 1 only. Here the portion of the curve for which y lies between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 is known as the principal value branch of the function y equal to sine inverse of x and these values of y are known as the principal values of the function y equal to sine inverse x. Next we are going to discuss inverse cosine function. For that let us consider the cosine function f defined as cos x whose domain is r and whose range is between minus 1 to 1. A portion of the graph of cos x is shown here. Now clearly f is not 1 to 1. But if we restrict our domain from 0 to pi, we note that f is 1 to 1 and so it has an inverse function called the inverse cosine function or the r cosine function and is denoted by cos inverse. Thus y is equal to cos inverse x if and only if x is equal to cos of y and y belongs to interval 0 to pi. Next we are going to discuss the properties of an inverse cosine function. The domain of cos inverse of x is minus 1 to 1 and its range is 0 to pi. The value of cos of cos inverse x is equal to x for x belonging to interval minus 1 to 1 that is mod of x is less than or equal to 1. Next we have the value of cos inverse of cos of y which is equal to y for y belonging to interval 0 to pi. The function cos inverse with x having the values minus 1 to 1 and y having the corresponding values as 0 to pi is strictly decreasing and is 1 to 1. Next in order to draw the graph of y which is equal to cos inverse of x we note that y that is cos inverse of x decreases monotically from pi to 0 as x increases from minus 1 to 1. The next thing to be noted is that the value of cos inverse of 0 is equal to pi by 2. The value of cos inverse of minus 1 is pi and the value of cos inverse of 1 is equal to 0. The function y which is equal to cos inverse x is defined in the interval minus 1 to 1 only. Now using these three points we can draw the graph of y equal to cos inverse x as shown. Now here we note that the value of cos inverse of 0 is equal to pi by 2 and the value of cos inverse of minus 1 is equal to pi and cos inverse of 1 is equal to 0. The portion of the curve for which y lying between 0 to pi is known as the principal value branch of the function y equal to cos inverse x and these values of y are known as the principal values of the function y which is equal to cos inverse of x. Finally we are going to deal up with some numerical problems. Now in this problem we are required to find the principal value of the function which is equal to cos inverse of cos of 7 pi by 6. In order to solve this problem let us suppose alpha is equal to this function which is cos inverse of cos of 7 pi by 6. Since 7 pi by 6 can be rewritten as 2 pi minus 5 pi by 6 so that 5 pi by 6 lies in the interval 0 and pi. As we know that the range of principal values of cos inverse function is between 0 and pi. Therefore, alpha becomes cos inverse of 2 pi minus 5 pi by 6, where we have replaced 7 pi by 6 by 2 pi minus 5 pi by 6, as is specified by equation number A. Thus, alpha can be written as cos inverse of cos of 5 pi by 6, which eventually leads us with alpha having a value of 5 pi by 6. Thus the principal value of the given expression which is cos inverse of cos of 7 pi by 6 is equal to 5 pi by 6. Next we have another problem in which we are required to find the principal value of the function 
which is given as sine of cos inverse of 3 by 5. Let us define this equation or this function of sine as equation number 1. Now in order to solve this numerical problem, we need to convert the cos inverse term into sine inverse term so that we can eventually get the value of this function. For that we are going to consider the given right angle triangle where the hypotenuse is equal to 1 and the other two sides are given as x and root of 1 minus x square. This gives us the value of cos inverse x is equal to sine inverse of root of 1 minus x square. Thus we can rewrite the function in equation number 1 as sine of sine inverse of root of 1 minus 9 by 25. This further gives us a value of sine of sine inverse of 4 by 5 which is equal to 4 by 5. That's the principal value of function which is equal to sine of cos inverse of 3 by 5 is equal to 4 by 5. With this we conclude the first lecture on inverse trigonometric functions which was based on inverse sine and inverse cosine functions.